Hey, good evening, everyone. I have 5.30, so let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> I'm Dieter Borman with Hanford Contractor Central Plateau Cleanup Company. Thank you for joining us tonight. This meeting is being recorded. So tonight's event is on a proposed Class II modification to the Hanford Dangerous Waste Permit for the 400 Area Waste Management Unit. And if that sounds vague or confusing, our presenter will be providing a lot more detail on what that means and what the proposed changes are in just a minute here. So this uh, event is part of a 60-day public comment period. That comment period began on December 7th, and it runs through February 11th. Tonight's meeting is an opportunity for the Hanford cleanup agencies to provide more information on the proposed permit change and for the public, the participants on tonight's virtual meeting, to ask questions. It's an informational meeting only, so the Department of Energy will not be taking formal comment tonight. Just want to go over a few technical details before we start the presentation. If you are joining us on a <clears throat> excuse me, computer or mobile device, you will see on your screen the agenda for tonight's meeting. You can submit questions at any time using the question and chat box feature in Microsoft Teams. And that is a little icon that looks like a thought bubble, probably on the top of your phone if you have a mobile device or at the bottom if you're on a computer. Uh, you can find it next to the hand icon. And in that chat, we have added the link to Hanford.gov events calendar um, that has materials that we'll be going over at tonight's meeting. When submitting a question via that chat box, please indicate if you'd like to read your question um, aloud or if you would prefer us to ask it. And then uh, I think we have time for people to ask multiple questions tonight if, if, you, uh, if you do have more than one question. So we will definitely get to everybody. Uh, for participants who are using the phone only, uh, you have entered the meeting muted. And if you do wish to ask a question, you will need to hit star six to unmute and then star six to remute. Uh, we just ask you to remain on mute during the meeting unless you're asking a question. And if you do step away, please don't put the call on hold. It can cause some distracting background noise. Um, feel free to just hang up and, and call back later when you're able. So I think that takes care of most of the housekeeping items. I'll uh, turn the meeting over now to the Department of Energy's Dwayne Carter for our feature presentation. I uh, also want to mention that uh, representatives with the Washington Department of Ecology are with us tonight. Ecology is the lead regulatory agency for this proposed permit change, and they will be available to address any questions directed to the state. Um, any questions about the process? or the meeting before we get started. Hi, this is real quick. This is uh, John Temple, Department of Ecology. I would like to clarify that if there really are any comments directed to Ecology, then please put those comments in writing and Ecology will respond to those comments in our response to comments document. That way, all those comments are at least part of the record. Thank you. OK, thank you, John. Um, Okay, hearing no further questions, let's uh, get started with the presentation that will be up on your screen as well. And uh, Dwayne, take it away. All right, thank you. So as John mentioned, at the end of this public comment meeting, there will be an address to send written comments to. So, this is the permit modification for the 400 area waste management unit, and I'll get into further description of what those units are in the presentation. My name is Dwayne Carter. I'm with the Environmental Compliance Division, U.S. Department of Energy, Richland Operations Office. Next slide, please. So our current meeting objectives are to outline the proposed permit modification to the 400 area waste management unit. The agenda will like I said, I'll describe the 400 area waste management unit, regulatory framework and permitting action, purpose and content of the permit modification, permit modification public process review, and then we'll 
have time for questions and answers. Next slide, please. So the 400 area is located just north of Richland, right above the 300 area, right before you get to Energy Northwest. It's not, and it's before the Y barricade, so you don't go onto Central Plateau to get there. It's former home of the Fast Flux Test Facility, which was deactivated around 93 and then fully decommissioned at the end of the 90s. And that was a, a sodium reactor, and that's the way streams we're dealing with. Next slide, please. So the 400 Area Waste Management Unit is comprised of two units. The fuel storage facility, or the FSF, which houses the core component part pots, or the sodium pots, that were removed from the FFTF. The interim storage area, which is just north of the FFTF, is basically houses one conex type facility or waste management building that has 19 containers in it that contain sodium and sodium potassium waste streams. So the fast flux test facility fire system is in requ requ permitted NMJ contingency plan, which currently is titled the building emergency plan fast flux test facility property protection area for the waste management unit. That is the only place it's mentioned. So the FFTF fire system is not required for the fuel storage facility or the interim storage area. So the fuel storage facility is a term we use cold and dark. So that means there's no electricity going to it. There is no alarm system in there. It's basically the only gauges in there are analog gauges for the argon system, which we're proposing to include in the permit alone. So the FFTF fire system is not required for the waste management unit. Next slide, please. So here's two different pictures. So the one on the left is the a wide picture of the 400 area. So the fire detection systems that are we were proposing to remove are on these bottom units. The 409 would be the FFTF re reactor dome itself. It's the one you can see right off the highway. And if you go up to the middle, there's 403. And if you go to the right, 403 is the fuel storage facility outlined in purple on my screen. And then further to the north is the interim storage area outlined in purple also. Those are the two units that comprise the 400 area waste management unit. And as you can see, if you look, on the picture on the right, that dome and those buildings around it are the only place where the fire detection systems that are mentioned are in the permit, and they have nothing to do with FSF or the ISA. Next slide, please. So, as I mentioned, the FFTF fire system does not alarm or provide fire suppression or any form of emergency response for the fuel storage facility or the interim storage area. Removal of the FFTF fire system from the waste management unit permit would allow the FFTF fire system to be decommissioned. This modification also adds another level of safety, safety to the system, the existing argon system to the RICWA permit, and adds an alarm to that system that notifies either Hanford Fire, Hanford Patrol, or their emergency operation center of any pressure excursions 24 hours a day. Next slide, please. All right, so as we mentioned, this is for the 400 area waste management unit. And the reason this is a class two permit modification is because we are proposing to remove a fire alarm system that really doesn't impact this thing, but it's in our RICRA permit. So we proposed it as a class two permit modification. And as Dieter mentioned, 60 day public comment period is open through February 11th. And there's the address that's available. Online. They prefer ecology prefers submitting an email if you can. And that's fairly simple process. I've done it quite a few times. Next slide, please. Any questions or comments? I'm going to go on mute now.
All right, thank you for that, Dwayne. Um, so before we go to the q and I just ask if anyone from the Department of Ecology has anything to add to that? Nothing to add, thank you. Um, yes, this is Deborah Alexander. Um, I would like to add that you can email comments to us, but we prefer you use the e-comment system, and I believe that link is out on DOE's webpage. Dana, if you have further information on that, please chime in. Thank you. Thanks. That yeah, link so is I the think. one that, that oh, this ahead, is Dana. Dana. The, the link that's at the bottom of the page, that would be the e-comments link. Great, thank you for clarifying that. Um, let's go ahead and go to our participants. I don't see any questions in the chat box right now. Does anyone on the phone have a question? Jerry Paulette has his hand up. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Jerry. Um, would you uh, you explain what fire protection systems then are in place for residual sodium and how that is handled in the permit as well as what's on the ground? So the current fire suppression to pre prevent reaction of sodium is the argon system and that's the inert gas system that covers the core component part pots in the fuel storage facility. And that's what we're proposing to add a 24 hour alarm and actually include that in the inspection schedule. And it's already listed in the contingency plan. Uh, uh, if you can let me clarify. Um, that's what happens in terms of actual other response other than the argon flooding system. For example, what if the argon didn't work? Who would respond? What are the, um, who responds to desert, um, and what timeline for response? That's a good question. That is why we're having the, the argon is a blanket. It stays on the whole time. And that's what the alarm system that goes to either Hanford Patrol, Hanford Fire Department, or the Emergency Operations Center will notify the re emergency response personnel of any issues with that system. But as the argon is heavier in air, it should take quite a long time for it to go away. And if you could go where the fuel storage facility is, where the core component part pots are, the core component pots are wrapped in heavy plastic, then they're put in a primary container, and they also have secondary containment system underneath them. So I understand what you're saying. If something does happen, I, I don't think we can react. There are class D fire extinguishers, which is for reactive metals outside of both facilities. And the fire department would probably go out and supervise. I don't think they, they could react to it. But that's why the, that's why the argon system is so important. And that's why the 24 hour alarm is important. All right, thanks, Jerry, for that question. Feel free to uh, feel free to ask another question, or does anybody else have a question? Okay. Well, hearing none, um, we'll give it just a just another minute or so here, but um, again, I'll mention that uh, this 
proposed change is uh, the comment period is open until February 11th. And again, on your screen there at the bottom of the page is the address to send comments um, electronically or via postal mail. And those comments will go to the Department of Ecology and, uh, and be responded to at that time following the comment period. And then I'll just ask one more time if, uh, if anyone has any final questions. Okay, Thank Dwayne. You. Yeah, Dwayne, do you have any parting uh, parting comments for us? No, I appreciate the attendance. It looks pretty good today. All right. Well, thank you all for, for attending again uh, on behalf of the Department of Energy. Thanks for joining us. And um, let's see, there is a evaluation. Is there a link to the evaluation? Okay, so Colleen is going to drop a link in the chat here to an evaluation uh, on this meeting. So we always welcome your feedback. And that will be in there now. So feel free to uh, provide any input that you have on uh, on this public meeting. And with that, again, appreciate you being here and have a great rest of your evening. Good night.